things are going on in the investigation at this point. But again, we want to thank all the members of the public, all of our first responders, uh, everyone who's been helpful, witnesses, and bringing forth uh, the information that we have. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Chief Allen. Good afternoon. Again, Chief Darrell Albert, Montgomery Police Department. Now, I'll kind of lay out the facts as we know them now regarding the incident that took place on Saturday, August 5th, 2023, at 7 p.m. Uh, there were several events taking place on our historic river front. Positive feedback regarding a school event hosted by Montgomery Public Schools and Hyundai was taking place at the amphitheater and nearby train shed. The Harriet II River cruise ship was fully operational, operating from a designated docking space along the river. The Harriet takes passengers on two-hour tours up and along the Alabama River throughout the day. On this day, there were 227 passengers aboard that vessel. The incident occurred between a co-captain of the Harrier II vessel and a private boat owner and his family. As the Harrier attempted to dock in this designated space, designated and reserved due to the gangway access as well as the mooring requirements, the private boat was docked in its space, prohibiting safe docking of the Harriet. The captain of the Harriet remained away from the dock for nearly 40 to 45 minutes as he attempted to contact the operators of the private boat via PA system. They were only responded to with obscene gestures, curse words, and taunting. The co-captain was then picked up by a separate vessel and brought to the pier in an attempt to have a conversation with the private boat owners and or have those boats move so that the Harriet could dock. A confrontation ensued between the co-captain and Mr. Pickett, the co-captain, being attacked by several members of the private boat. Several members of the Harriet II came to Mr. Pickett's defense, engaging in what we all have seen since on social media. I'll give you a timeline as the way the calls came in and the Montgomery Police Department's response. The original call came in at 7 p.m. as a typical disturbance. The caller, who was the captain of the Harriet, was very calm and not in distress. As additional calls were received, at 7.15 p.m., the call was dispatched to the Montgomery Police Department. 7.18, the first units, four Montgomery Police Department officers arrived on scene, with three shortly thereafter. 13 individuals were detained and brought to police headquarters for questioning and interviews. Those interviews lasted several hours. At that time, all parties involved were released pending further investigation, but were all given instructions on how to secure warrants on combatants. We have since consulted with and are continuing to work with the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency, our state police agency, the Montgomery's DA's office, and the local office of the FBI. This investigation is ongoing and more charges are likely. We encourage the public to continue to send us additional videos or evidence relating to this case. Those can be sent to Star Center at MontgomeryAL.gov or at our secret witness, 334-625-4000. The victims in this case, the co-captain, Mr. Damian Pickett, black male, and a 16-year-old white male juvenile who was struck by the owners and operators of the private boat. The suspects thus far have been identified as Richard Roberts, white male, 48 years old, with two outstanding warrants for assault, third degree, 
Alan Todd, white male, 23 years old, one warrant for assault, third degree. And Zachary Shipman, white male, 25 years old, uh, one warrant for assault, third degree. We have instructed those individuals to turn themselves into law enforcement and as uh, at this time, uh, one is secured and in custody, the other two are set to turn themselves in within the next hour. We're also asking for Mr. Reggie Gray, the black male, 42 years old, who was seen wielding that folding chair to contact the Montgomery Police Department for further interviews and as part of this investigation. As the mayor said a minute ago, this investigation is ongoing and more charges are likely. We want to thank the public and the media for supplying the much needed evidence and video surveillance uh, that we've received and then helped us to determine the facts as they happen. Keep in mind, when this incident took place, when it initially took place, the police department didn't have the luxury of the videos that we all have seen now. The police department was acting on statements and witness statements um, that occurred as we arrived. Now that we have more information, again, more charges are pending. Uh, I'm available to answer your questions, but that sums up where we are at this time. Sir? Yes, David, I'm CBS 42 Can you identify who has turned themselves in? Um, not at this time. Uh, we know one individual has turned himself in. He is in the custody of the Selma Police Department. Again, I've worked with the Selma Police Department, and uh, we've been working very closely uh, with Chief Fulford over there, and Chief Fulford contacted me just prior to this press conference and said one individual has turned himself in, and the other two are set to turn themselves in uh, a little bit later. Now, the issue is we had multiple addresses uh, in Selma and in Orange Beach. So locating these individuals were a little bit challenging, but now uh, we've made contact, we should be and will be bringing those individuals here for justice. Sir. Chief Brady Scott, ABT, Saturday night, there was some video that showed some individuals being led away in handcuffs. Were those folks detained or were they released a little later after they were detained? So on the night of the incident, the Montgomery Police Department detained 13 individuals for questioning and for further investigations. Those individuals were transported to police headquarters, uh, in which at that time we were able to gain the much needed information we need and provide them uh, with information on how to secure warrants uh, for, for the information and for the, the acts that you saw uh, live on TV. Can you identify yourself and thank you. Uh, well, thank you, yes. Yeah. So the co-captain, uh, again, as the co-captain approached uh, the dock and attempted to peacefully move the boat over, just enough so that that Harrier could park, um, the owners of the boat confronted him in a very hostile manner. There was words exchanged, and then it turned into a fistic encounter that you've all seen. So uh, the co-captain was doing his job. Uh, he was simply trying to move the boat in just enough to where the, the cruise ship can park uh, safely in its, in its identified location. However, uh, it quickly escalated into a fist that can come. So as it relates to racial epithets in, in conversation and, and, um, and names being called, while the Harriet was still uh, out in the water, there was a lot of, uh, I've seen finger gestures and, and comments and uh, innuendos made uh, at a distance. Of course, when the co-captain approached, there was, that continued. Uh, but again, working with the, the local FBI, we did uh, examine if there was enough to uh, file hate crimes charges on this case. And again, we, we rely heavily on advice from the FBI. Uh, we've also looked at uh, you know, what it takes to elevate this to a riot. Uh, inciting a riot. We've worked with our local district attorney and it didn't fit the criteria for that. So the charges that we have pending on the South Third uh, at this time are appropriate charges for what we've seen and the behavior that we've seen on, uh, on social media. Chief, 
Yes, so the four warrants that secured are all members of the pontoon boat, the pontoon boat uh, and the attack on the co-captain. And there was an attack on a 16-year-old employee of the smaller vessel that took the co-captain from the, from the Harry to the dock. That 16-year-old was assaulted by one of those members of that platoon boat, and his mother actually went signed warrants on one of those individuals. That, that individual was a 16-year-old white male employee of the smaller vessel that was operating in the river at that time as well. Yes, so assault third is misdemeanor charges uh, by statute, and the names of the individuals that's wanted is, Ro I'm sorry, Richard Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S. He's a white male, 48 years old. Uh, he has two warrants pending for assault third. Alan Todd, T-O-D-D, -D, uh, 23 year old white male, has one warrant pending. And Zachary Shipman, S-H-I-P-M-A-N, white male, 25 years old, he has one warrant pending. Excellent. Also, um, we've been hearing that there was also possibly previous incidents with these voters that you need knowledge. Was there any uh, previous incidents with these voters and the river boat, river boat crew? We have no knowledge at this time that this was something that was continued from prior incidents. This was a standalone incident, again, that was brought to our attention and we acted on, on information we had. I can tell you we looked at every avenue. Uh, there was no stone unturned. We examined this over a period of time, not only that night, but since that night. Uh, at this time, based on the way the statutes read and the way the laws are, are crafted, uh, we were unable to present any inciting a riot or racial, racially biased charges at this time. I'm sorry? Okay, so the smaller vessel I mentioned in which the co-captain was moved from the Harrier, Harriet to the dock was moved by a smaller vessel. A smaller vessel operating independently in the river uh, was able to pick up the co-captain and bring him to the dock so that he could work on move, moving the boats that were impeding the docking of the, of the Harriet. I do not have the information on the defendant that turned himself in. We do know that one has since been in, uh, taken into custody by Selma PD, and the other two are en route to Selma now to turn themselves in. And of course, the Montgomery Police Department will do that transfer of those suspects for um, to be transported here to the city of Montgomery. So the, there was no signage at the time. However, the mooring area for the Harriet is well defined by uh, the dock itself, the area that's cordoned off, as well as the large poles that, that, that the boat ties off to. Um, and you know, what we do is the Harriet is, is parked there all the time. That boat is out there all the time. Um, Individuals that utilize that river and that dock are very familiar with where that larger vessel is required to dock uh, because of the mooring that's set up as well as the gangplank areas that needs to be uh, utilized to get those passengers on and off the vessel. Well, I'll say this. There, there were signs there over a period of time. The signs have either been removed or blown away uh, several times. We are looking at a new strategy to post the signs where they're more permanently attached and affixed. I absolutely understand the question and the concern. That's why this department went above and beyond and you know, looked under every stone for answers. And we reached out to not only uh, ourselves internally, but we looked at our state and federal partners to, uh, to, to consult with to see if we're 
you know, right in line with the charges that's appropriate for the incident at hand. Well, first of all, this is not indicative of who we are as a city. The city of Montgomery is much better than that. Uh, our people are fine people. We have plenty going on in terms of events. Look, that was a positive event. You know, Montgomery Public Schools and Hyundai Corporation getting together to do a back-to-school event. Uh, we had the boat operating in the river. We had folks downtown enjoying a good day. Uh, that's what we're about here in the city of Montgomery. We're about a good time, enjoying ourselves, and being neighborly. So it was quite disturbing that we saw this type of activity happening. And that's why the Montgomery Police Department and all of our partnering agencies got together to make sure we're doing all we can to not only bring this case to a close, but prevent it from happening in the future. Mayor, Alex. Mayor, you I couldn't say that. Well, the co-captain did uh, receive treatment at a local hospital on the night of the event. Uh, that's the only um, knowledge that we have of anybody receiving any injuries uh, or receiving treatment for injuries. Chief, uh, what, if anything, do you feel could have kept this from getting so happy? Well, uh, you, you know, we talk about conflict resolution and de-escalation all the time. We talk about that, and it's not only for kids. It's not only for teenagers and juveniles. Everyone must be aware of conflict resolution de-escalation. There was no need for this event to take the path it did. As the questions continue, some of you are going to see a two-minute break right here on Live Now. Well, again, we have many, many more interviews to conduct. We're going to ask everyone that we previously interviewed, as well as the, the videos that we were starting to receive, uh, as we identify additional folks that we need to talk to, we'll ask them to come in and we'll try to locate them and do further investigation to see if charges are appropriate. Wait, let's go here now. I'll come back to you. Well, my message is again, uh, like I just said a minute ago, uh, the people of Montgomery, and, and you know, we're better than that, and that, that we're a fun city, and we don't want this type of activity to, to shed a dark eye on what this city is all about. Uh, you know, again, we're going to do all we can, our due diligence, to ensure that uh, this case is solved and, and, and put to rest, and that we don't have this type of activity going on in our city again. Sir? Can you state your name and who you're with? Oh, with who? Okay. okay, so the individual wielding the, the folding chair has been identified as Mr. Reggie Gray, uh, black male, 42 years old. We, we're again asking Mr. Reggie Gray to contact local law enforcement. Uh, there's more interviews and, uh, for us to conduct with him, and uh, I'm sure we'll be in contact with him in the very near future. We're asking him to reach out to us within the next 24 hours uh, so we can, again, uh, sort through the issues with the folding chair and what we all saw on social media as well. Well, what I'll say to that is anyone involved that has culpability for violating the law is subject to uh, you know, restrictions in, in terms of the law. So we're going to go where this investigation leads us. Uh, no one's off limits. Uh, we'll interview as many as we need. Again, on the night of the incident, we interviewed 13 that we were able to detain and transport to police headquarters. But again, uh, I don't think we're, we're near finished. We have a lot more work to do on this, and we'll continue to inform the public and the media on our progress. 